All right, guys, today I thought it would be fun and a little bit different to talk about some bomb-proof survival gear. Now, of course, this is not all-inclusive, but I wanted to do a well-rounded kind of approach to quite a few uh, pieces of kit that I think are really bomb-proof and very hard to destroy, hard to go wrong with, and most of it is honestly priced pretty well. So without any further ado, guys, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon at check out the Patreon and Instagram. It all means a ton. Okay, let's talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the tools first and then kind of get into the kit. And the first one I'm going to start off with is the saw. Saws are super important and maybe not singularly the most important survival tool, but uh, having a good folding saw is certainly a part, should be a part of your kit and your priority. And for me, the most bomb-proof saw, folding saw out there that exists has to be has to be the Baco Laplander, which is this little guy right here. And the reason why I think that the Baco Laplander is such a bomb-proof saw, I do have things like a Silky. I do have quite a few Silkies actually, but the Baco Laplander is a little bit softer, a little bit less hard in its high carbon steel, making it extremely flexible. And and what usually happens with this tool is if you do bind the saw, heaven forbid, it will usually bend and it will break. And luckily when things bend out in the woods, it is very easy to correct that, straighten them. And ultimately it is much easier to fix a bent blade than it is a broken blade, especially out in the field. So that is the first one up on my list is the Baco Laplander. Okay, next one up is a hatchet. Now, similar to the saw, the hatchet may not be the most important tool out there. And this one probably will come as a surprise because I don't usually love this hatchet, but it is the Husqvarna hatchet. Now this is the 16 inch handled version. And the reason why I chose this uh, hatchet over my more well-loved uh, GBA Wildlife my more well-loved wild, GBA wildlife hatchet is for the fact that this is just simply more bomb-proof. It is a heavier head and it will fatigue out your muscles faster, but if you are looking for something bomb-proof, if you are looking for something that can take more abuse, the wildlife hatchet has a very hard bit to it and it has a very thin blade, which makes it very good for slicing and chopping and making it arguably a better hatchet, but not a more bomb-proof hatchet like this one. Like like I said, this thick, not quite as hard high carbon steel that comes ultimately from Holtzbrook uh, is very, very bomb proof, very hard to destroy and very hard to go wrong with. Not to mention, not to mention, it is also far, far better priced. The wildlife hatchet is close to $200. This is around $50. So, so this is a much, much better choice for price. About the only thing I would recommend doing with this particular hatchet is going for uh, convexing the edge like I did. And hopefully you guys can probably see the edge for better cutting and better uh, essential depth when you strike. So that's about the only thing I'd recommend changing on it. But once again, not my favorite hatchet. I do like my wildlife hatchet. Okay, now my favorite thing and what this channel is known for is knives. Now, obviously it was quite hard to choose just one knife, so I thought I'd throw a few and just do kind of a lightning round here. First one is going to be the SE6. Of course, the SE6 is well known on the channel. It is a great all around tool. It is a little bit more expensive, but is very hard to go wrong with. Next one up is going to be the Cold Steel SRK, a really great budget pick. I mean, SK5 high carbon, and this one has been a solid workhorse on my channel and for me for many years and it's very hard to go wrong with especially for its budget price next up next one up on the list especially if you're going to be rolling without a hatchet or a saw you may want to factor in a bigger knife something like the se hunglis 2 or the or the full-sized hunglis uh, are going to be fantastic options as well very robust very durable and very capable survival tools okay so that leaves us with the last tool up on the list and that is going to be the multi-tool and for me it has to be undoubtedly the leatherman surge now this is a generation two both generations are very solid performers they have a number of capabilities that i've talked about in other videos before such as the exchangeable saw blades sharpener or sharpening file and of course you have your solid main blade and serrated blade so all of that 
factored in with a really large, very capable set of pliers makes this a automatic win for survival. And of course, being that this is full steel, it is very, very bomb proof, very indestructible. So it obviously has to make the list. Okay, now let's talk about some kit. So for me, uh, something that I get a lot of comments about is, you know, containers. And for me, the most bomb-proof survival container that I have and that I regularly use and love is going to be the Titanium Vargo Bot. These Titanium Vargo Bots are not only extremely lightweight, but they are also extraordinarily durable. And they are one of the most multi-use pieces of kit for cooking, boiling water, you know, catching water, doing all that stuff that you can really get out on the market. This is the full-sized one. They also make a 750 milliliter. I usually just go for the full liter sized Vargo bot because it's titanium. It's already very lightweight. So this is just uh, the, the one that makes the most sense for me. And once again, I cannot recommend the titanium Vargo bots enough. Some people do say they have issues with the screw uh, lid binding or being sticky. I've never had that issue unless you cross thread it. So you just want to be careful not to cross thread these caps because if you do, it will be an absolute bear to unwind or unscrew. So just keep that in mind. But aside from that tiny thing, aside from that tiny inconvenience, the Titanium Vargo bot is the bomb. Okay, next one up is going to be a survival kit. Now, of course, the contents of your kit will vary, and so this isn't just a full kit, but for me, one, one piece of kit or... So your kit that will actually go inside of this will vary, but one of my favorite kits or pieces of equipment to carry survival equipment is going to be the Maxpedition Janus. And the Janus is just one of those small pieces of equipment that really just fits just right. As you can see, I have this one rigged up with a personal locator beacon. I have a lot of survival equipment, a little Altoids tin on the inside here. And I really just have um, everything that you'd realistically need for the first 24 to 48 hours of survival in this little kit condensed. Of course, it does not have a knife, a saw, or a hatchet. So that's why I mentioned some other components earlier, but this Janus has has been through the ringer. It's been on most of my adventures in the Alaskan Outback and uh, it just absolutely keeps on keeping on. So I think that the Maxpedition Janus is one of those pieces of kit that's uh, reasonably affordable and also very good for performing and really and a perfect size for a reasonable survival kit. Okay guys, so that is thing Okay guys, so that is some bomb-proof survival equipment. And like I said, the key emphasis here isn't necessarily that it's the most capable, the cheapest, the most expensive. It's just stuff that's very hard wearing that you can really put through the ringer and it will continue to perform. And I think that's what a lot of people look for when they look for survival kit gear or equipment or even kits themselves. So hopefully these suggestions helped you out. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.